Oi, fala aí pessoal, bom dia. Você está escutando o inglês do inglês do rádio. I am your host, Foster Hodge. This is your daily dose of English. Hey guys, it's Foster from English to Ikru. I'm here with Alexia. Alexia is laughing because this is the second take on our interview of today because Alexia is making a lot of inappropriate jokes. <laughs> I say this is this is not um liberdade de de fala. This is not free speech. Yeah. We don't have to have free speech <laughs> on English to Ikru. It's my show. It's my show as well. Yeah, okay. It's still inappropriate. <laughs> anyway, today, Alexia, we're talking about something that I love to talk about and read about and listen to podcasts and audiobooks about, which are which is language learning, but more specifically, kind of the world of language learners and polyglots and all of these people doing things online with language. Yeah. Okay? Okay. Yeah. So, do you spend a lot of time reading language blogs and stuff like that? Not as much as you do. Yeah, and obviously. But spend any time like watching YouTube videos about English? Of course, we work with that. Yeah, yeah. It's just most of my students they always have they have there's so many resources out there. So you can watch YouTube videos, you can read blogs, you can listen to podcasts, and it's really, really overwhelming. So what I'm trying to do today is just take one of the most popular language learning people in the world and try to kind of break down some of his ideas and some of his principles so you don't have to listen to millions of hours of books and blog posts and all that. Okay? Cool. So let's get started. So today we are talking about Benny Lewis. Benny Lewis is originally from Ireland, and he is the author and the founder of Fluent in Three Months. Can you repeat that with me? Like, say, <laughs> Fluent in Three Months. Fluent in Three Months. Yeah, and a cool little hack, a little tip, is with the word months, I actually do not say the TH. Uh, now you're messing with me. No, I don't say months. I just say months. Like it's a Z or months. something. Or an S, yeah. Months. Why months? Because it's a difficult sound. And months. sometimes when we have really difficult sounds like that, we're lazy. Okay. Yeah. Good tip. So Fluent in Three Months is the most popular language blog in the world. So Benny started a long time ago, maybe 10 years ago, kind of one of these first language bloggers, and now it has millions and millions of people that visit the site every month. I think he speaks, or he says he speaks, like 12 languages. Well, his picture on a website, he looks like a very nice old guy. <laughs> I don't think he's that old. <laughs> well, he looks like it. <laughs> I'm sorry, Benny. Maybe one day he'll come on the <laughs> podcast if you stop saying that he looks old. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, he's older than we are, but he's not like an old man. Anyway, uh, fluent in three months, Benny's real idea is that you can be fluent in language in three months and that you should start speaking languages immediately. Those are his two big ideas that he has kind of made popular on the internet. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. But he also has a book that is called Fluent in Three Months that I read years ago, but I just recently listened to the podcast or the audiobook version of the book. And I just wanted to talk about some of the most important things that, or at least what I thought were the most important things. Yeah. And see if it helps you and get your opinion on it. Of course. Let's do it. Okay, sounds good. Let's do it. So I took some notes on the main points. Point number one, Alexia, 
Give me a drum roll. Oh, God. So the first point that I took about Benny's book is he really wants you to speed up the language learning process or make the language learning process faster by interacting with native speakers in your home city. So before travel, before anything like that, he is a big fan of things like italki, Cambly, Meetup, all these Meetup. Yes. So there are probably people, if you're trying to learn English, there are ways either on the internet or in person that you can actually practice the language without leaving your home country. Yeah, it's pretty easy. You just you just need to stop being lazy, right? And find people around. There is another app called Tandem. Tandem? Yeah, that almost all my students in Portuguese, they use it. And they yeah. love it. Yeah, so I don't think it's necessarily just being lazy. I mean, I kind of do. But, for example, what would you say to one of our students that lives in a very remote area in Brazil and a very small city and they definitely do not have English speakers physically around them? Yeah, so tandem, um, italki, Cambly, whatever, things like that. Yeah, what if they have no internet access or cell phone access? So we, they won't be listening to us so i don't know what to say to them yeah if <laughs> sorry we can't please everybody <laughs> i'm sorry i'm sorry i will come with something but right now i don't but on this point i really agree with benny that most of my students wait too late like if they are planning a trip to the u.s they are going to take an english course in the u.s and They wait to really practice and speak to native speakers until they get there. And then you get in the airport and you're like, shit, I don't actually know how to speak English. And maybe they were practicing a lot in Brazil, you know, going to classes, doing grammar drills. But you need to speak with native speakers a lot before you travel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I do agree with that. Okay. Point number one. Agree. Check. Good job, Benny. Uh, point number two, can I get a drum roll, please? Drrr. Speaking from the start is essential. Even an absolute beginner can find ways to communicate. Okay, so what do you think about this, Alexia? I think that this will give anyone the confidence that they need. Even though the person is a beginner, they will try to get along and they will know how to try to communicate and make it and uh, like fazer com que seja entendido I don't know how to say this mm, I make, you can try. make himself to be understood yeah um, in that case I would say make themselves understood make themselves understood yeah so I think this is tricky so on one hand I do think it is essential to start speaking and start thinking about pronunciation from day one on the other hand for example i just started french classes and i was thinking yeah you know i'm good with languages i'll just do it and start speaking on day one and it was not good for my confidence it was terrible <laughs> for my confidence because i did not know anything but i do have two stories about this past week when i had to change my iphone battery i went all by myself to the mall 40 minutes away from here, where we are. And I got to the mall and I had to wait for two hours, two hours and a half. And I had to eat and I had to buy my conce concealer, concealer. Uh, the makeup? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yes, that's it. But when I got to the store to buy it, I didn't have my phone to find how would I say corretivo. Mm -hmm. And I had forgotten how I would say that. Yeah. So I got to the lady and I said, hi, ma'am, I really need your help. I am trying to find a product. And she said, of course, which product is it? And then blank in my head. Yeah, All brain blank. fart. <laughs> and, and then I looked at her and I said, I am so sorry. I don't remember the name, but it's 
this place and then I pointed under my eyes and I said to this place and she said oh concealer and I said yes concealer <laughs> yeah so that is a great example and um, I have another one okay Go so I went to have lunch and I really wanted a donut yesterday no okay at the mall the same day <laughs> and I went to the Starbucks place because I didn't want to eat like Chick-fil-A or Burger King and Starbucks was the only one. Right. You wanted something healthy like a donut. Wait. And okay. I had a sandwich with my tomato juice and a donut. But when I ordered a donut, I didn't say like donut. I said donut. Yeah. I don't understand that. So, I mean, I do in context, but... Yeah, the lady looked at me and she said... The lady looked at me. Looked at me. The T sound in the past, very important, looked. So the lady looked at me and said, I'm sorry, come again? And I knew that I was pronoun pr pronouncing donut in a wrong way. Yes. And I had to point at her, like, at the, 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 the thing that I wanted... <laughs> <laughs> and she oh, yes, of course. And that's it. So, even though advanced students... they Advanced. I said advanced. I said, you can listen to it's it. It's on the record. We will listen. Yes. She did not say the first time. I said, Foster is correct. Continue, please. Even though advanced students have problems, but we can do mimic every time. We can... Sorry. Mimic. Yeah. Uh, mimic really means imitate. I think what you're trying to say is we can make gestures. Yes, we can make gestures. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, there's a lot to unpack there. <laughs> As usual, Foster makes a great plan for the podcast episode. And <laughs> Alexia tells stories about donuts, buying makeup at the mall. <laughs> but What? Yeah. No, there's some great points here. So my first point is Alexia has studied English literally since she was a little kid. She is the co-host of an English podcast. You work for an English school. And it sounds like you went to the mall the other day <laughs> and were almost a complete beginner, like pointing at your face, pointing at donuts. I'm saying that is should give a lot of confidence and hope. To everyone. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And I wasn't ashamed of myself at all. I wasn't feeling shy because I'm sorry. I don't remember the name of the makeup. Yeah. And I couldn't say donut in the right way, but I yeah. get along with that. You still can't. It's donut. Yes. Yeah, it's so hard. Donut. No, it's just do. Do. So just like say do, like in Portuguese, but then really round your lips. Do. Yeah, so you're saying do with your most gringo accent, do nut. Do nut. Okay, say it with me. Do nut. Do nut. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so yeah, I think it's really a mentality shift. It's a shift in perspective because now you are very confident as an advanced speaker. So when you make a, you know, a small kind of stupid mistake like pointing at donuts and not knowing what to say, <laughs> You don't care. You're just like, I want my donut. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the donut over there. Yeah. Yeah. So that should be a great lesson to beginners. It's really not as much about skill. I would argue it's more about confidence. It's more about the way you think about your English, the way you think about the way you communicate, and just having that little extra self-esteem boost. And what will happen with me is that I won't forget the name of the makeup itself. I'll always remember what happened to me. And I'll always remember this is a concealer that I need. Yeah. So it's very good. Yes, there is a lot of science that proves in situations, like the more emotional a situation, the more dramatic a situation, the more it sticks in our memory. Yeah. So if you were crying in the mall saying, donut, donut, <laughs> you will never forget that. Besides that, I had a very, very great day there. And I met a lot of Brazilians, so that's it. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, Brazilians representing in the U.S. So, Alexia, I think we will have to continue our conversation with Benny tomorrow. <laughs> But, um, yeah, 
happy donut day, everyone. Yay!